So what have we done last week? Right. Um, I'm going to summarize. I'm going to put that in summary. I'm put that in summary. Right. We had we had done the eight functions. Right. I've done all these exponential functions. Right, we did all of these, right? Domain and range. Do you guys have any questions? Okay, I'm gonna bring the eight functions with us. We've done that, a nice summary, didn't we? Could you guys bring me questions? The eight functions. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. Okay, so I'm gonna do it in one stroke. Do you guys have any questions? So know. far, we have done all of these, right? The first eight functions and then the, the exponential functions, right? And these functions are being covered from beginning uh, from pre-algebra to all the way to, um, or what else? College algebra. College algebra. All right. So this is across multiple textbooks. Multiple textbooks. And today we're gonna cut. We're gonna we're gonna study. Remember the one to one function we talked about? Yeah. Do you still remember the definition? Remember, I'm teaching this class. I also have in mind, I want to train you to think when you take calculus class, how to apply definition, okay? So that's what, that's how, that's what I'm, I, that's what I try to get you to do, okay? Do you still remember the definition of a one-to-one -one function? Can you get that flashcard in front of you? Whenever, yeah? X sub one, whenever the input are different. Their output are different also. And the build on top of it is a function. Okay. Function is a rule that assign each input exactly one output f of x, one-to-one -one function, right? So when you look at these eight functions plus the following function we studied last week, can we go over them once again? You're gonna tell me which one of these are one-to-one -one functions and we're gonna do something about them. Okay, we're gonna do something about them now. Is this constant function one to one? I want to say no. No, yeah. How about this one? Apply the definition. 
this is recap with that we've done we've done it before right in calculus class you were just applying the definition over and over and over and over again this way and that that's what you do really is this one to one is this one to one is this one to one yeah is this one to one? 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna give you five minutes five minutes okay and i'm gonna step out just for a few minutes and for Ruth, you're gonna take yes. over okay okay and tell them you know go over the definition and just briefly go over this is one two three four eight functions we're reviewing this right we learned this by re repeating and all of these functions whether they're one to one increasing decreasing i do work on that okay everybody has a notes Notebook in front of you. Okay, we're recapping what we have learned last week because we, and after that, we're going to move forward and we'll continue to do that next, uh, next, uh, tomorrow. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Professor. There's a five minutes. Okay. Thank you. Hello. Hello, everybody. Good morning. You can bring your question to my attention, let's see if I can help you maybe simplify a little bit or build up some confidence. Okay, I have my board ready. If anybody has question, bring it up. For example, what we see on the screen, these are in the same family of what type of function? Any volunteer to answer? I don't know about anyone else, but I don't really have any questions on this part. Of the okay. So, uh, yes, usually when professor asks, you know, uh, dates or pause for receiving answer from class, those are the times you can respond. And so she knows where to, how much to spend time or not. When no response, she might think the student don't remember or forgot all those things. So uh, thank you for responding, Nicholas. I saw Jacob and Nicholas mainly responding once in a while in the chat, a couple of more students. So we are about 20 students. Me and Professor together, we are showed 22 people. So yeah. If you have any question, bring it to our attention now or in the math study center. Uh, so uh, responding to professor's request, what we see in the screen right now, they're all from what type of function? When you see they're going up, right? from left to right, looking at the graph, they are, they are the same family of, family of what? Exponential, yes, yes. Thank you, Wilbur, good job. Exponential functions. So within all those exponential functions, f of x equals two to the power of x, e to the power of x, and so on and so forth. You wanna choose one of them, maybe e to the power of x, and then look at the graph, look at the equation, the function, and try to start from there and, you know, 
expand that property to everybody else, all those exponential functions. Same domain range, intercept, so on and so forth. Okay, Professor, I... Thank you yeah. so much. I, I really okay. appreciate it. Okay, so yeah, now let's... that um, you see we, we have, you guys have, you know, you, for, for, for a quick decision, whether it's a horizontal, or whether it's a one-to-one -one function, you just have to do the horizontal line test, right? You already have the graph, right? We already have the graph. We have talked about those last in last week's lectures. So if you have a if you have a picture of the function, it's very easy to decide whether it's horizontal or it's a one to one is not a one to one. Among these four four functions, then we know that this is only one to one, right? Professor, uh, it there is only one output for any one input except zero on that graph. Is that right. one to one? Is that still considered one to one? Right. Exactly. For, for x is input zero, what is the answer? Undefined. Undefined is answer. Very well. Very yeah. well. Thank Undefined, you. right? Yes. Zero it cannot be in the domain. You can see on the picture, you're not going to see it. You see this function as simple as it is, you're going to use it a lot in cal in calculus class because it's variations that are going to show up here and there. There'll be many variations of these. And I'm, I'm gonna, you know, throughout the semester, you're gonna see there, these basic functions will blossom into more complicated situation, okay? So now we're still talking about the basic. You must make sure you understand the basic, everybody. Okay, if you don't understand the basic, it's very hard to understand the complicated. All right, so among these four, this is, this is one-to-one, -one, okay? The next question is, what are we going to do with it? Today, we're going to talk about if a function is one to one, then it has the inverse. If it has the inverse, we're going to find that inverse. And what does the inverse mean? Okay, this topic is across the multiple courses, as I mentioned before. Is probably permeated throughout, like um, you know, college, intermediate algebra, college algebra, and then trigonometry. So this concept is going to permeate throughout these courses. So they're not they're not alone. So we're going to start from simple. So today we have we don't have a whole lot of time left. So I'm going to work on this function. I'm going to show you what to do. Okay. I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna use this one as an example. Okay, first, okay, write this down. If a function is one to one, it has an inverse. What is more, it has exactly, it has exactly one inverse. Okay. There will be confusions, okay? I know there will be. So let me explain what is the inverse. So suppose a function is one to one. So if you look at the function uh, situation, right? From input, it produces output. What does the inverse do? Okay, so suppose we have a function we call f. Suppose we have a function called f. And since it is one to one, therefore it has the inverse. That inverse, I'm gonna call f. This is the notation, okay? You're gonna see this notation. This notation is a little too, uh, let me make it larger funds. Can you see the negative sign, negative one on the shoulder? Yeah. Okay. So this function 
is one to one. So it is since we know we already know it's a given. It is one to one. Therefore, it has exactly one inverse. What does it mean exactly one? One and only, right? Exactly one. Unique. Unique. So what do the inverse do? Okay. So now, if you if we know that the for the function, there's a domain. There's a domain. So the input is taken from the domain. Okay. Uh, where's my other symbol here? So this x is from the is from the domain of this function. And f of x will belong to the range, right? Of the same function. The inverse function is also a rule. The inverse function is also a rule because it's a common function, right? The inverse function will take input and output as well. You guys follow me? But what is the input? The input of the for the inverse function uh, suppose we call them, we can call them anything, right? Let's call them X again. Typically, they're gonna be called X again, but these X's are going to be from the range. It's gonna be from this range. This range will be called a domain. Okay, so this range goes here. I mean, I mean, I'm gonna put an arrow there. Okay, so this is a domain. This is a range. So you're gonna have an output. This output is uh, just write it down for now. I'm gonna I'm gonna draw some. Uh, so this is the range. In this relationship, in this relationship, okay. This domain for the function and the range for, for the inverse function, these two are the same, okay? And the range for the function and the domain for its inverse, these two are the same. Do you follow me? Together they can make a loop. Yeah, we're gonna see that loop, absolutely. Do you follow me? This is the mechanism. This is the mechanism in general, consistently. Mathematics is anything that has to be consistent. Okay, mass has to be consistent. Anything you expect from mass, number one thing you expect is gonna be consistency. Okay, so I'm gonna show you. So number one, is how do we find that inverse? Wait, oh, wait. Okay. You guys understand that relationship? The inverse related relationship. Oh, sorry, I don't, I don't mean to have that arrow. If a function is one to one, it has exactly one inverse and, the, and there's a domain and range. And the next question is how do we find it? How do we find it? Let's find a inverse. Let's find an inverse. You guys might have seen this before, but you might not, you might not have seen this before, but it's okay, okay? So I'm gonna remove those arrows, uh, expecting you guys have written them down. So let's find the inverse just for this particular function. Okay, now, because we know this function is such, right? To find inverse, the general steps are the same. So we have f of x here. The first step, step one, is swap. Swap, in the past, you might have learned, we swap x, y. 
Mm, where's my arrow? We swap x, y. What does it mean swapping x, y? This guy, okay? The place of x and y switch places. This is swap, okay? Represent the swap of domain and range. The swap of domain and range, domain and, and domain and range are also swapped. You follow me? Yeah? Yeah. Step two, solve for y, solve for y. How do we solve for y on this case? All of these operations we work with is in the what? It's in the, in the, in the proper domain. So when we work with this function, we implied we're working in the domain of the function. So you don't have to question. So when we have, when we swap the domain and range and everything works perfectly, you can assume that domain range. But when we swap it, the domain and range is swapped at the same time. But in this case, domain and range are the same. Do you guys see that? The domain and range are the same. You follow me? Mm -hmm. But there's still a swap taking place because in some cases they're not the same. Okay. So, so today we won't get to those examples, but tomorrow we will. So today we just talk about the method. So how do we what do we get when we solve for y? We can just treat it like this, right? We can just treat it like this. Oh, hold on. We can just treat it like this. X, X is what? It's X over one, right? And we flip it upside down. So Y equals what? One over X. As a result, the inverse function is going to be one over x. The inverse function is going to be one over x. This is the only function. The function and its inverse are exactly the same. This is the only function that the function and its inverse are exactly the same. So that means they have domain and range. They have the same domain and range, everything the same, right? So that's why sometimes it's not being mentioned and a lot of details is overlooked, okay? But because this function is so important, you're gonna use this function over and over and over again in calculus classes. Okay, I'm addressing these issues. So domain is swapped. Now, let's look at the other mechanism I think Farouz was trying to talk about, right? The domain swapped, so suppose we have a function. So the next, the next thing we're gonna talk about is that suppose we have an input. This input is given to F. Okay, it produces an output. It produces an output. And this, this output, okay, this output is gonna be in the range of F if it's in the range of F, it's in the domain of this inverse, isn't it? Because these two are the same, right? You follow me? Mm -hmm. And then I can take this, I can take this guy as the input for the inverse. And then what happens? It will uh, inverse, okay, hold on. Let me complete that inverse notation. And it produces an input it produces an output and that output is like this. And the input is f of x. What should this be equal to? This is gonna equal to x. Okay, 
okay, you look at you look at this machine, right? Now we have two machines. These two machines are inverse to each other, inverse to each other, okay? The input given to f produces f of x. f of x is given to f of inverse. So this guy is the input now because that the, the range and domain is the same, right? So this guy is given to inverse for input and producing an output. That output is going to be exactly the same as the input we started with. Now, another scenario. I take an input from the, in from the inverse. Okay, so I give to F inverse. F inverse, F inverse. And this is gonna produce me F inverse of X, uh, F inverse of X, okay? Why these symbols, why X is being, even though this X is from the domain of F and this X is from the domain of F inverse. Okay, so F inverse of X, that's the output after the rule of F inverse is applied to it. And then we're gonna, and this, so this guy is in the range of, hold on, let me, let me grab this over here. Okay, I'm gonna grab this over here. So you can see that this guy that taken from the domain of the inverse produce F of inverse of X, is in the range of F inverse, and that's the range, but this range and that domain are the same. Therefore, this can be used to apply this rule, can, can be applied the function rule. As a result, we're gonna produce, okay, F of the input is this, And it's going to be exactly the same as the input. I know you, you, you might feel dizzy a little bit. Is that right? But no fear. Bad. Okay. No fear. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you an example to, to conclude today's class. Okay. And we'll continue this tomorrow, okay? But this is gonna be the theme for some time. So we're gonna repeat this over and over for different rules and they're inverse, okay? So don't worry, just hang in there, hang in there. Because this is a, I promise you, I will hold your hand to get you there, okay? For example, for example, I'm giving given the two, number two to F. Okay, so now we have a f. This function is equals to one over x. And it's inverse, the same, right? We just did it. The inverse is also the same, one over x. Okay, these are the, f and it's inverse the same. And this is the only one, okay? This is the only one in the whole wide world. This is the only function that the function as inverse are the same, okay? So now, and the domain and range are the same. So this is, there are a lot of sameness, so, right? So this is a perfect simple example to demonstrate. And there will be other cases we're gonna see coming along our way. So now two, first I'm gonna give it to F. F. What is f of two? This is f of x, right? So what is f of two? If the input two. is two, the output is half, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now I'm gonna take this half and give it to f inverse. This rule. So it's gonna come out, what does it come out with? 
as inverse of what? Of half, right? What is f inverse of half? f of x, f inverse of x is one over x. Now, what is this? So this input is going to go here, right? Complex fraction, right? So one divided by half. One divided by half equals what? How many half in one? Two. Two. Aren't they the same? Mm-hmm. OK. One more. Suppose I give you I give an input three to the inverse. Inverse. Professor, okay. is that a typo on line two? Is it? I'm sorry? On line two, is there a typo? I guess you meant a arrow but it shows a negative sign after the box. F oh, yeah, 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 I'm sorry. It's an arrow. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Farouz. Thanks. Thank you. So F inverse of three, F inverse of three, what would that be? This is F inverse, right? So when the input is three, when the input is three, the answer is what? It's one third, right? Yes? Yeah. Right, you just plug in, right? Just plug in the numbers, plug in three and plug in three. Anybody has any questions here, please? Okay, so I'm now one third is the output. Now I'm one third is in the domain of F, right? Therefore, I'm going to apply, uh, F. F is applied to F of one third. What is F of one third? And that's going to be one over a third, right? What is one over a third? That's a three. I'll put exactly the same as input. And this is true forever for this pair of function. Okay, last but not least is that suppose I give any input from the domain of F. So I'm applying the F and it's gonna come up as, in, uh, as F of X. Sorry, F of X which is gonna be one over X, right? I apply the function and then I'm gonna apply the inverse. Oops, F inverse is gonna come out as F inverse. This time my input is one over X. You guys see that? F inverse is one over X. Therefore, plugging in, plugging in one over X is gonna be one over one over X. And that's equals to X. Okay. I expect you guys to ask questions, guys. Okay. So this is the last line I'm gonna to cover today. So this input X is gonna be from the domain of F inverse. It's gonna come out F inverse of X. And then I'm gonna, and this of course is, is my output. My output is one over X. And then I'm gonna take this output and serve it as the input for F
and it produces f of one over x. And once again, at the same drill. So to summarize this property, to summarize this property is here. This one, that one, these, prop these two properties. Now, the question you say, oh, you see this X and this X, they're all by the, they use it, we use the same symbol. How do I know which one is from where? Okay, here's a clue. If you give X as input to F, this X is gonna be from the domain of F. If you give the X to F inverse, and this X is supposed to be from the domain of F inverse, and these two function may not have the same domain, okay? We just, this time we just happen, they have the same. Sometimes they don't have the same domain. And that will also be true. So when you judge the input, the input is entirely decided by the function. All right, I'm gonna leave you guys at this. And this has been, uh, so we count this as introduction to inverse function. Okay, we have a bigger picture ahead of us. The bigger picture is that we're gonna handle the exponential function and its inverse. And then we're gonna cover the trigonometry functions. And these are like two, three courses, you guys. You can't afford not to pay attention and not to ask questions. This is two, three courses. Do you agree with, with me, Farouz? You don't have to. Absolutely, no, absolutely. absolutely. Okay, so please do pay attention, get to every details, but I promise you're gonna repeat over and over and over again, all right? Uh, in different mode, different examples. Okay, so that's all for today. And our, our quizzes, our quizzes are gonna be closely related to my lecture. All the answers you need for your quizzes, they are all in the lecture. If they're not, you should let me know. Okay. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good job. Thank you, Professor. Bring your questions, please. Okay. Let me know more about you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Have you. a great day. Keep up with your good work.